All right, so when it comes to decision trees, we're gonna be able to now include an explanatory variable. So you may say, oh, Dr. Williams, why did you not include one before? How does that connect to the Gini index? Why is the Gini index used without an, an explanatory variable? Well, the thing is, with these yes and no's, there could be some information on, let's say for example, the third group, why these are yeses, why these are yeses, and why these are no's. And that why can be explained by the explanatory variable. <laughs> so <laughs> with that being said, here we go. So this is a data, this is a status data frame one. Um, we have GPAs are going to be our, um, our explanatory variable and our response variable is, um, our is status. Okay. And so what we're going to do is use someone's GPA, use the GPA to determine whether they should be admitted or not. Isn't that cool? This is what they do. <laughs> this is what, uh, I said they didn't need this line of code, um, these lines of code, but I'm going to keep it there just it, to, for me to tell you that I don't need this already ran above, but, um, I'm going to keep it there because at first they were in different notebooks. So just run this. Okay. No complaints. Don't be mad at me. Pause it. I thought though that went to Africa. All right, so it worked and ran. Okay, we have our data frame. This is a pandas data frame that we're using. So if I do status, come on, auto completes. Okay, guess not. You don't want to do that for me today. DF, and then do, then I put a print in front of it. Run it again. It shouldn't give me that much time. Too much issue. Oh. Sheesh, still taking time. Okay, so now it's finally <laughs> finally worked. This is the data frame, like after three minutes. Um, again, noticing the difference between these scenarios. Notice that this is split right in half. Anything above a three is a yes. Everything below it, below a three is a no. Whereas here, some of those twos, two of those those two twos <laughs> are yeses. Okay, someone was more lenient. Okay, let me make this a half. Okay. All right, so going ahead and printing it, you save the notes, you see all this. I'm gonna run this now. This shouldn't be an issue. Okay, good. It's just they saving the data frame one into to status data frame, just so I can change this to two later. Um, and so again, the explanatory variable is GBA, the response variable is status, um, right? Status, yeah. Okay, yes is in those, okay, yeah. All right, so then here, this is what we're going to do. What we're gonna do is just create an arbitrary split, okay, an arbitrary split. And when it comes to splitting, it, it's contingent when the actual machine learning algorithm actually does this work. I did a, a lot of research on this. <laughs> it actually does a bunch of splits. I think it does almost every single split based on a quantitative variable. Whereas if it's a categorical or categorical binary variable, it just does where that actual level is. And so that's fine, but legitimately it's, it's a split. And so within each of those splits, within each of those splits, a Gini index is calculated. Okay, so determine the impurity for both of those groups. So that's where it gets. That's where we get back to um, the first video was just us doing the math, but then in this video we're legitimately doing the math in multiple groups. Okay, so what's going to happen is less than three, less than or equal to three. I'm going to print these out just so we can see this. Prints auto complete for me. You're not going to auto complete. Okay, good. Okay. <laughs> Print both. Okay, so what it's gonna do is that every GPA that's greater than or less than less than or equal to three is going to be in group one. Everything that's greater than or equal to three or greater than three is gonna be equal to group two. So this is important to note because in this situation, this impurity, sorry, the measure of impurity impurity should be zero. This is a pure group, for goodness sakes. Whereas in this particular group, hmm, there's some impurities. Okay, so why don't you try the math on your own? Come on, I know. Try the math on your own. So this one you know for a fact is zero. What do you think the impu what do you think the impurity is gonna be here? Okay. So take a moment you can pause the video and find the impurity. Sorry, find the Gini index. You're measuring the impurity. Find the Gini index in this situation. You know the Gini index here is gonna be zero. Alright. So this little function here, this is what I call a function. This is not a method, this is a function. This function is going to calculate to the Gini index for us. So all we have to do is provide it the group, the data, 
okay as well as the classes okay i believe it's the number yeah the actual classes either known known yes in the situation and then from there it provides us the gini index which is cool um if you want to go a little bit deeper you can um Talk to me during learning hours to see what exactly is happening here. But just know that this function this is we're going to see a little bit more functions in the next video as well. But um, but this is calculating the Gini index. OK, so here we go. So here, this actual idea of classes tells me, OK, um, how many what are the unique classes here? It can be no, yes, maybe it can be no, yes, maybe waitlist, so on and so forth. In this situation, when I print classes, I'm just going to print should auto complete. I shouldn't type everything out. <laughs> so when I run this, boom, I was gonna run everything. Jeez. Ah. So when I run this, it should give me no and yes. Ah. Let's knock this out. Comment this out. Boom. Okay, no and yes, exactly. So this didn't work. Don't know why it didn't work. Let's see. And again, this is me designing the function that we have known yes. Did I run group one, group two? I did run group one and group two. Okay, that's fine. Oh, I didn't run this, that's why. Okay, boom. So now I have no yes, it will print out the classes, but I got no error. I didn't get an error because I, Gini index now exists. So this is now going to find the Gini index for each group, okay? And this should be whatever value that you all calculated. Ideally, let's see if I can do the math real fast. It should be two out of six, one third squared plus four. Is this four? One, two, three, five, five out of seven. No, oh, this is two out of seven squared. I can't do the math fast. Five out of seven squared. And then you add those values together and you do one minus it. And so that'll be that value. And this should be definitely zero. Okay, there we go. So, but the thing is, when we make that split at three, which is fine, um, we know that when we make a split, we need to find a Gini index corresponding to that particular split. So, yes, we find the Gini index for the group one and group two, or I can say left, right, uh, but we need to find the weighted um Gini index, which measures the impurity of that particular split. So what I mean by weighted is based on the sample size, based on the sample size, which in this situation is 10, right? Um, the first group had, um, oh no, the first group had seven individuals in it and yet the second group had three individuals in it. So based off the sample size, the weight of the the Gini index needs to be weighted based on how big the actual group is. Okay, I hope that makes sense. You might have to rewind it again a couple of times to make sure that it makes sense. So this in and of itself should be seven out of 10, and this should be three out of 10. Okay, let's run that just to double check. Okay, I'm gonna do print. So this should be 0 0.7, this should be 0 0.7. And this should be 0 0.3. So I'm gonna comment these out. Boop. Comment this out. Boop. And then run this. And we should now exactly 0 0.7, 0 0.3. And again, the reason why we're waiting is because if a group is way, if the split's way too small, we need to account for that one particular group not being as large regarding affecting the actual Gini index. Because that split in and of itself is gonna tell us how good of a how pure are our groups? How pure are our groups? Okay. And again, the reason why that's important is because knowing how pure our groups is tells us which to admit and who not to admit. Okay. So I'm going to do this. Okay. Do this. It's doing the math for us. Boop. And then boop. Okay. And run it. Okay. So our weighted in Gini index would be 0 0.284. 2857 for a split at three, meaning that anything above three is in one group and everything three and less is going to be in another group is 0 
three, I'm getting kind of excited because imagine this. Let's imagine I make the split at a different location. Let's say I make the split if it's if it's two or less. If it's two or less. If it's two or less, what happens to our data? If it's two or less, they are two different groups, the no's and the yeses. But this should be an impurity of zero. Um, this would be an impurity of zero, Gini index of zero, the index of zero. So zero squared plus zero squared times five over five, which is one, is just zero. So ideally, this is a perfect split. So let's go ahead and try this out. This is so exciting. <laughs> Don't have to run this again. I can run this again. This should be zero, zero. Boom, boom. Then I run this. The weighted Gini index is zero. So you can kind of get that how the Gini index is working in terms of measuring the impurity and that depending on where you split, that's going to minimize, you would want it to minimize the actual weighted Gini index. So depending on where you split, where you split, the idea of splitting is minimizing the weighted index, okay, which gives you the most impure, make, gives you the most pure um, groups, okay? So that's that. It's a long video, but I'm okay with it. I am a okay with it. I'm okay with it a little bit longer. Oh, one more thing I want to say. Let's do a recap. My bad. So <laughs> essentially, what we did was we uh, talked about the different data frames. I changed this one. I didn't change. I could have changed this one, but that's fine. Uh, we have two different data frames, but we just focused on one. That's fine. Um, we went ahead and saved it into this particular data frame, size data frame, and then we specified the explanatory variable and the response variable. The reason why this video is different from the previous video is that we're actually using the explanatory variable where to split and then looking at the weighted in Gini index rather than just the Gini index of the sample. Um, we decided to we decided to make the split and then from no and yes, we have created a function to then um, calculate the Gini index. Um, and then we specified the Gini index for each of the two different groups. And then finally, we find the weighted um, index based off the sample size, conditional conditional on the size of the group um, to determine the weighted index for that particular split. Okay, now I'm done. <laughs>